Now go ahead, call your through to the police emergency. What's the emergency? What's the address of the emergency? The girlfriend has a baby. Like, 42, what address? Maybe the baby's come out. Go ahead, call the emergency, please. There's one phone number everyone knows. Police emergency, how can I help? What's the emergency, please? And last year, it was dialed 31 million times. You just prepare yourself for what could be one of the most traumatic things you're going to hear or one of the most comedy moments that you're going to sit through. Suze, vibrator stuck in anus. These are the people who tune in first to our cries for help. Right, listen, you need to come. Listen, listen to me. They said you need to listen to me so we can help her. Making decisions that can mean the difference between life and death. We're going to pump the chest hard and fast. One, two, three, four. I just go over the call and think, have I done everything I could have done? Jesus Christ, I think she died. <laughs> We follow the calls as they are passed to police, fire and ambulance. <laughs> Seeing through their eyes how Britain is changing. Get back, get back! Calm down! Have you taken any drugs at all? Nothing at all. Nothing at all? Yeah, it's definitely the Wild West, all right, yeah. <laughs> I get to see the side of Britain that no one ever thinks about. Well, I'm looking for a guy with a sofa. You've not seen one, have you? I learnt a lot about what goes on in real life, to be honest. I am sweat. Get to the emergency. In Blackpool, one sector of society is taking up more and more of the emergency services' time. Hey, just tell me to fuck off. Whether they're called out to deal with 15-year-olds... They wanted to, like, search me. I wasn't having any of that. You've got yourself locked up and you're in a police station and you don't get to decide. Or 13-year-olds. I've never liked him in here. That's a really annoying. Calm down. And sometimes children are even younger. One, two. <laughs> and the kids are only part of the problem. You two, I think you've done the right thing. Well done. You two, you need to look at what's going on today. There's a serious issue, isn't there? We'll put it this way. Eleven years ago when I joined the police, I used to drink wine and I only drink vodka and gin. That's what it's done to me. And I'm not even living with these kids. Can you confirm he called me a big fat pig? You did. Yeah. Thank you very much, BT operator. Thank you. Bye-bye. No, when you get a little kid, they don't realise that 141 doesn't work on our systems. I remember a 15-year-old from Charlie. Basically, she rang up and went, ah, my fanny's blown off, and then put the phone down. I was like, right. <laughs> rang her back. I was like, is this your mobile number? Do you live at such and such a day? Bang, phone down. Absolute shit itself. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's right. For the 65 staff who handle Blackpool's emergency calls around the clock, prank calls from children are par for the course. Um. Hello? Am I speaking to an adult? Yeah. It's the police station calling. Somebody's been ringing 999. Send my eggs? Yeah. Don't send more eggs. You don't send 999, do but in recent years, they've seen an increase in the number of calls about children's bad behaviour. Hi, um, just, um, I know you're very busy tonight. It's just to make you aware, there's kids throwing fireworks in the street and the mum's just nearly hit my gram. There's my baby in. Good evening, Lancashire Police. Karen speaking. How can I help? Hi, um, we've just uh, got two very, very young shoplifters. I don't understand how old they are. Yeah. How old are you? Seven. Seven? Right. Do they know where the parents are? No, they say they don't, but... No, right. the Both children. parents are at home. That is disgusting. OK, guys, come here. 
Right, what should you do to that guy's car? You're absolutely nothing at all. Right, don't get all Kevin and Perry on me. I really do anything to his car. Right, you've been letting down his tyres. Have you got some problem with their kid? No, he's, he's giving me shit and that's what I said, about him. You said you'll batter him. And, and do, do you mean do you mean it when you say that? If he gives me shit again, yeah. How old are you? Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Mum of two, PC Claire Van Der's Goss, has worked in Blackpool for over ten years. A lot of the kids in in Blackpool um, are being brought up on the streets by their friends, who sometimes are a lot older than them. Therefore, they've been exposed to things before their years. You all right, guys? Hello. That's not your jumper, is it? All right. How old are you all? 13. 13. 12. 12. How old's little guy? Six. Six? Oh, what a guess. Wowzers. What time is it? It's, it's just half past seven, nearly. All right. Are you doing do in now, are you? No. No? What time are you doing? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock, and, and how about you, little one? He's coming in eight, four minutes is, before. Is he your brother, is he? Yeah. yeah. looking after him. <laughs> All right, cheers, guys. Keep yourself safe. You spend so little time as a child, and you can mess up such a massive part of your life in such a small space of time. Um, that really needs to be instilled into these kids. A 999 call's been received about a group of young kids causing a disturbance in a residential area, and PC Mike Ellis is dispatched to have a word. Mike 45, I am with the kids with the scooters. Hey, mate, you all right? Fuck off. You just told me to fuck off? No. We don't need the attitude, do we? No, Never give you attitude like that. Sorry, Not once. Ah. When I was young, I... I'm not from the same era as my dad, where it's like, oh, they'd give us a clip round the ear and send us home, and then my dad would give us a clip round the ear. But I was definitely not scared of the police, but respectful of them. Um, if a policeman stopped to talk to me, I'd be, I'd be very nervous about it. Now I'm going to ask you to stop skating up and down outside here because you're upsetting somebody to the point that they've rung us. Well, I'll take your scooters off you, and then you have nothing to scoot on. So get yourself off. What did you want to ask me? No, you're not. But yeah. people live here, and you're jumping yeah. up and down outside on scooters. It's noisy. It's night time, and they might feel intimidated by you. Right, go and play somewhere else other than outside here. Uh, according to the Independent the other day, yes, but no, you're not. Oh, sake. No, you're not allowed. There's more ones. What? There's more ones can swear. Not the big one. Sake. Do you want to put it to the test? Because I will throw you in the back of my van. No problem. No, you're not allowed to swear at the police. Just get walking. I don't think we get called pigs as much as people would like to think we do. Um, I've been called a c quite a few times. That seems to be a pretty, pretty popular term for us, which is quite a big step up from pig. And I certainly would never have dreamt of calling anybody that when I was 14, let alone somebody who was wearing a stab vest and had a baton. They're not afraid of you on any level. And some of them are probably just waiting until they're big enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you so that they, they can get that badge of honour. They'll flick the bird at me when I'm walking down the street. Honestly, it's, it's absolutely... But what do you do? do? Do you rise to it and have an argument with him? No, you know, you just give them a look and carry on going. But I wouldn't have dared. I think we've got 35 cells and several thousand disrespectful teenagers, so locking them up isn't an idea. We'd, we'd have a police station full of children. It would be like a large, comprehensive school. Emergency call centre staff in Blackpool are taking more calls about children's bad behaviour than ever before. And the things young people are getting up to are becoming surprisingly adult. Police emergency. Um, we're just sitting on the South Pier at Blackpool. Oh, right. Uh, and under there, there's about seven boys and one girl. The girl and the boy in the red top have just had sex under the pier here. Then she's given them a blowjob. How old would you say they are? Uh, 14, 15, 16. Okay, no problem. I'll get someone down there. PC Mike Ellis, the closest available cop, Make straight for the pier in search of a youth in a red top. Hey! Where are you going? Come here! Oh. This is power. That's how you just 
stop. You stop. Do you understand? Oh, yeah, come on, four I don't care. I do not care. It was a Saturday afternoon. Very sunny. There's young children about, and it's not really something you want your little five year old seeing as they're going down to build sand castles. Can anybody please tell you to stop? Stop. But you didn't look. I didn't know there was any police. You turned around, my phone case dropped, and I picked my phone. You read? Case up. Sorry? You read? Yeah, I can read. What's that say? Police. What colour is this? Yellow. Bright yellow. Yeah. You saw me, you looked yeah. at me, I asked you to stop. You no, I didn't right. see you there. I didn't, yeah. honestly, honestly, you officer, what? I didn't see you. If you want to get lied to, I'll ask a woman if I've got a nice personality. You're looking me in the eye and you're lying to me. With the runaway juveniles detained, PC Ellis turns to the female who, despite being well known to the police, is now claiming she was not a willing participant. Um, spoke to informants, both decent people, with Sim, that female, uh, lay on the bottom step underneath the pier, uh, male in a red hoodie who I believe you've got detained, having full intercourse with her and her performing all sex on him. Right, they look like the sexual activity was forced. By all accounts, it's not been forced in any way. <laughs> she, she's willingly performed all sex on him. Right. Boss, take your DNA test, boss. Well, eh? Actually, what do you do for a living, sir? Let them just talk. Hey? What do you do for a living, sir? Demolition. You... Demolition? Are you employed at the moment? No, 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 no. No, all right, I'll tell you what. Yeah. I won't come round your house tomorrow morning and tell you how to watch Jeremy Kyle. <laughs> Don't start telling me how to do my job. I'm not. If I need to take I'm DNA, I'll take it. Please, will you and Danny go and stand down yeah, there while I talk to this lady? Stand up. Yeah, sure. Thank sure. you. I'm just stating the, the facts, that's all. All right. I'm going to find out what's going on. We've got two males detained at the moment. We've spoken to the witnesses. They say it looks like you were willingly giving oral sex. Just listen to me. I'm telling you what witnesses are saying. You were willingly giving oral sex, which I think you were doing for money. Well, I'm not bothered anyway. Well, let them go, then. And let no, we're not go. letting them go. But if you're just trying to cover your backside because you were soliciting for sex, there's no need. Were you having sex with them for money? Is that what this comes down to, Lisa? Be, uh... Right, thank you. Mm. So how much were you paid for this sexual act? Fiver. Broken fiver. So you weren't, you weren't raped, you were sucking people off for a fiver? Fucking Columbo. Right, well, I haven't got a glass eye, so I ain't Columbo. Oral sex from a woman, and I think they had full penetrative sex with her as well, for the princely sum of five pounds. Oh, my God, not again. No, it wasn't the bargain, it seemed to me. Not a lot of choice, really, have we? You're under a pier in a family resort performing oh, yeah. sexual acts for fiver. It's not brilliant, is it, Lisa? It doesn't show Blackpool in a very good light, but bizarrely enough, the female, she was taken to my van and she was like, why am I getting locked up? What have I done wrong? I said, well, you're administering oral sex on a beach in a family holiday resort. And she said, no, it's not. I said, it is, it's a holiday resort. People bring their children here. She said, it's not a holiday resort, it's a shithole. At which point, I was just like, well, some members of the public don't agree and they have brought their children here on holiday and they most certainly didn't want to see your toothless mouth around his, yeah. At Blackpool Central Police Station, the 17-year-old youth accused of paying for sex is being booked into custody. I suppose there is an element of it's a, a rite of passage. It's not a rite of passage that I've ever been through. Thank God. Um, kids will go up to mischief. Young people will go up to mischief. Alcohol is great for uh, losing your inhibitions, so a few drinks and you'll pretty much get up to anything that your mates egg you on to. Probably not his proudest section. Where I just hope that it wasn't him losing his virginity. It's what an awful story to tell that would be. <laughs> PC Chris Hardy and his team make straight for the house. 52, 54, that one, the big broken window. There we go. But the group of boys has already scarpered. Good evening, how are we? We're up, well, we're all right. What's gone on, then? What's, What's happened is my son come in with um, four of his friends before. Yeah. Very frightened that these lads was after them. The lads who was after them came to the house. And they've thrown a said brick at window, causing damage to same. Yeah. Who yeah. smashed the window? Logan, probably, yeah. Right, so you've not seen anyone smash it? No, no right. I What's it over? And I need you to be honest with me. Nothing, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely nothing. 
just bear with me. So for no reason at all, no, re no reason, no reason at all. whatsoever, a group of lads want to come fight you and put a brick through your window. Yeah. Come on. Is it? Is it What's not over girls or anything? No, it's Girls, Facebook, nothing. drugs. I'm not interested in the reasons. I just need everyone to be honest with me so I can work it out what's going on. started Logan wanting to fight with Michael. Ram, what was that over? Just Michael called Logan fat. Roger, speed camera plays outside the farmers. It's nine o'clock when they finally track down prime suspect, 13-year-old Logan Fagan, still playing out with his mates. Have you smashed the window, mate? Oh, did you do it? Have a break. Jump in my van for the time being. It was just a case of picking Logan up and we're just going to take him back home. Job done. Make sure he was in, get it sorted, no further issues. And I don't know if he took offence at me, something I said, or somebody else, but then he, I know he tried to headbutt me. Off me. Fuck off, I'm in Fuck off. Logan, don't do that, you stupid boy! Logan, stop it! I'm just leaving you do it. Calm down. Please, stop it, you're this only a boy. What's your name, mate? We'll start with the basics. Logan, fucking hell. OK, Logan. Put your language out, Logan. When the Please don't like swear. The charge, mate. All right. We're going to deal with this quite reasonably by asking you to attend a voluntary interview. You didn't have to be home, did you? No, OK. Fucking hell. You're now under arrest for criminal damage, OK? All right. Some young people out there who are absolutely spot on, a lot of time for. There's some people out there who are absolute idiots towards us. I want to start again, fella, or you'll be on the floor again, right? Do you hear me? Oh. What? The fuck off, do not. Stop. You're going to make threats to us? again, right? And make a threat. What are you taking tonight, mate, to make you turn into an idiot? Nothing. So you're normally this obnoxious? I've never liked them in here. They're actually really annoying. But... Doesn't they shouldn't put me on the floor like twice. In the space for like ten minutes. Just for swearing at them. And trying to headbutt. Sorry? And trying to headbutt them. Hmm. Should they not put you on the floor for that? Yeah, that, but when I got around the back of the van um I told when to fuck off and then he put me on the floor. And apparently that was a threat. Which it isn't. Jump in there. Sit down. What did your mum say when you got home? She wasn't really bothered, to be honest. I think some people do need to be a bit more accountable for what the children are doing. They do need to actually know where they are and what they're doing. I don't think it's as simple for me as opening the door and letting the child go out and then letting them come back at 10, 11 o'clock at night. That's a silly little boy. Back in the days, I mean, we weren't allowed out the house after 7 o'clock. We had to be indoors. I mean, kids are out now till 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. We were, I never seen 1 o'clock in the morning. Only if you let them, surely. You can't stop a kid from going out now at 7 o'clock, no chance. Not a 14 to 15 year old, you've got no hope. You're going to stand there all day and barricade the door now. You can't, you can't do it. Can I take these cuffs off? Yeah. You're behaving. No attitude, no swearing. Yeah? All right. You can't make your kids do, like, everything that you could in the back days. I mean, when I was young, I always got brought home by the police, faced my father and got punished. But well, now, you're all right to walk the streets at 10, 11 o'clock. If a kid's walking the street now at 10, 11 o'clock, the police don't pick you up. They just let you walk. Put your trainers off, then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You've got bed socks on. Yeah. They're a nice colour, suit you, then. That's really comfortable. Beautiful, then. Right. You can't mother cuddle a kid. Your mother cuddle a kid and they're going to get bullied more. Oh, don't call for Logan, he's not allowed out after 7 o'clock. Mummy looks after him, so you, you're going to let them get bullied. Let them go out, enjoy their life. All right. Go out, learn yourself, learn the hard way. Kids have got to go two ways, don't they? Either get bullied or be tough. Logan's gone the tough way. What did it Samuel, basically? No one's going to learn by doing it, are they? What should they do, then? If you were in charge, what would you do? To put them in the cell for two days. But so you think they should be tougher on young people? No, well, not tougher, but... Just, like... Punishment should be tougher a bit. So I'd just put them in the cell, get an interview, then going home. I don't see the, I don't see the point in that. Yeah. 
It's not only teenage boys who are ending up in the cells. It doesn't matter if they're new or not. Over 40,000 teenage girls a year find themselves in custody. 15-year-old Kaylee Jones has been arrested on suspicion of assault. I went out about nine and there was some woman that was really drunk and um, we started to laugh at a joke, <laughs> not at her, at something one of my mates said. And she come over and started going, just pushing, saying, are you taking the rip out of me? I was like, no. And then I pushed her and then she was on the floor. I was a bit annoyed because I didn't know why I had been arrested. I didn't feel like I had assaulted her because she had done the same to me, so I was saying that she had done the same to me. And then they wanted to, like, search me. So I wasn't having any of that. Get off me! Get off me, please! Then they said, get changed. I didn't want to get changed. I was shouting that I didn't want to get changed. I'm not going to have you behaving like this. Make myself clear? Right, should we start again? Can you turn around? Right. I'd never no. get changed listen, in front of my bloody mum! Right, but you're not. Unfortunately, listen to me. Unfortunately, you're not at home now. You've got yourself locked up and you're in a police station and you don't get to decide. She's not a bad person. She's just a teenager. They have no respect for discipline. My mum would tell me to do something and I did it. Whereas now, I tell my children to do something and they are, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't say that. So I came to that point where now I'm just like, well, you've just got to let it happen. Because if you don't, like she said to me, she'll go to social services. <laughs> oh, no, <that's> my friend. <laughs> so now they're kind of, the children are controlling the parents, <laughs> not the... It's the wrong way round. What would you do if you got arrested again? How would you behave? I have been since. I'll have you? For what? Um, the same thing, but at school. Good morning, or good afternoon. I've got this little boy walking barefoot. He hasn't got a clue where his mum and dad is. So he's with you, is he? he he's with us now, yes. Just wait here a minute, please. Come here. What's your name? He's called Sam, the little boy. Sam? He's just walked past me, but he's walking the street with bare feet. He doesn't know where he lives. I'll get, I'll get someone there. That's ASAP, obviously. The little boy's been found completely alone on a Blackpool back street. PC Mark Glass is sent to question him. How old are you? Nice to How many birthdays have you had? That is funny. Are you three? I two. You're two? So is your house that way or that way? Can you point to it? Um, that way. Which way is that? <laughs> I said to him, where's your mum and dad? And he says, I don't know, at first. And then we collared him, walked further down the, on this side of the road, because he crossed over. And then he says, he said his name's Sam. And he's asleep. And, and his and parents, his, are, asleep. parents are asleep. And that's all, and that's all we can get out of him. <laughs> Barefoot as well. It's, it's sickening, that's all I can say. It's just sickening. The number of children that we have go missing mm -hmm. is, is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Last weekend, Five children went missing in the space of two hours. Four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old, all missing. Have you had full and that? And then the following day, there was a three-year-old lad went missing on Blackpool Promenade, followed by another three-year-old lad, followed by a five-year-old from the Pleasure Beach. And you just think, how, how are this many children going missing? Right, here. See which one your house is. I need to go shopping. <laughs> How far is it to your house? Are we getting close? Oh, oh no, we didn't go to mummy and dad. We didn't go to the the bathroom. Look, what? car. Car, yeah. <laughs> is it down here? Is it on this street? Do you think? I know. No. 
No. Go that way. Yeah, definitely. Which way now? Which way, Sam? That way. Which that way? Are you making this up? Uh -oh. 7603, anything more for the description? The two 12-year-old twin females with long blonde hair, so far. Another two children are missing, this time on the promenade, and PC Ellis needs to speak to their father. He's managed to lose his children, his two children. He sent them off to the beach and carried on drinking. And now the tide's in, and he doesn't know where they are. 3901, stupid question, I'm sure, but have they got mobile? 7603. How long ago? Do you know your last saw him at quarter past five? 1715, so two and a half hours. Hello. We've got patrols out looking for your daughters, but there's obvious concerns about the welfare, because the tide's come in, and you've no idea where they are. Have you been drinking? About four pints. About four pints. All day, yeah. And where do you live? I don't know. Are you local? No, I live in no. Bingley. The stain at the cliffs. I'm from Bradford. The stain at the cliffs. Uh, Bingley near Bradford. Okay. What's one's name? Vic Victoria. Victoria. We'll take a seat in my car and then we're away from all these drunken morons. Are they allowed to go out on their own when they're at home? They, they don't normally. They normally go out with their mates. It depends. Right, but they do go out without adult supervision. Yeah, well, they do go out to meet the mates, yeah. It's one of the daughters, back. How long are you away for? Just for a week. It's one of the daughters, back. Night four, five. Can two, two, touch me, please. Hey, Sarge, I'm just wondering who we've got available to start um, flyering the arcades and stuff for these posters. The tide is now all the way in and the girls have not been seen for nearly three hours. Alpha Mike, uh, two -two. Yes, I'm just being told that they are at the Cliffs Hotel. Colleagues contacted the Cliffs and they're definitely there. Right, they've turned up at the hotel, luckily for you. So I'm going to take you up there now and reunite you. <laughs> Hello. Hiya. You all right? Yeah. Which one's Lauren? Me. Gabrielle? Yeah. Hiya. You okay? Yeah. What's happened? Well, we were out in, in Blackpool, obviously. And then we went, we, Dad said we were staying at this pub, and then we told him we were going to the beach. Yeah. And then our big ball went into the sea. Right. And so we, we went in and got, went and got it. So then we were really cold. And then we went to the pub and he wasn't there. And so we got the bus and we came back to the hotel and we've been waiting here for about three hours. Right. I need to have a chat with your mum and dad. I'm just waiting on your mum getting back. Hopefully this is her. Because we've been very worried about you. We've had a lot of police out looking for you in the last 20 minutes. Is it Vicky? Vicky, do you want to come around this side for me so I'm not having to twist and speak? Because I need to speak to everybody. I'm a bit concerned about what's happened today because you've been drinking and, to my mind, you're a bit drunk, OK? Have you been drinking as well, Vicky? I had a couple of drinks, that's all. Right. I've only had a couple. I know you're on holiday and I know you want to relax, but we've had a near disaster today. I These do. two today have been in the sea while you have been sat in a pub. And they got told they won't... Right, uh, just told. listen to me. But if you were supervising them on the beach, they could have gone in the sea and right. you could have watched them. Or you could have told them not to go in the sea. You can't do that while you're staring at the bottom of a pint glass, no. can you? Yeah. You've got to tell mum and dad off for the way that they've handled the situation. And all the time I'm just thinking, I should really be telling these two to take good care of their mum and dad. <laughs> you two... I think you've done the right thing, but you've got yourself back to a place of safety. Well done. You two, you need to look at what's gone on today. There's a serious issue, isn't there? So you'll need to book your ideas up. Right, I'll leave you in peace. Thank you. Probably a little harsh, bit of a judgement on one little incident of their life, but that's the incident that I see. 
and that, that is what I will form my judgment on. So, sorry. If you, if we sit down, it'll go Nino, Nino. I promise you. Put your legs out. It's been half an hour since little Sam was found wandering the streets, and he's beginning to lose patience with the police operation to return him home. Are you ready? If you stay sitting here, we'll do that again. We'll do it. No, you've got to sit here now, and we're going to play it again and get back to the police station, all right? Alfred's Ray 2-2. Right. So we're on social services now, see what arrangements can be made for this child. Yeah, we do that, mate. Come on, let's go see if someone recognises you. Have police ever been to your house? <sighs> I'd miss my child after five minutes. Yeah. Less than that. Yeah. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. Um, well, hopefully, social services will pull one out. Um, Say goodbye. Goodbye. See ya. See ya. Yes, Tim. Sam's busy tucking into his tea in the police canteen by the time Mum finally sounds the alarm, over an hour after he was found in the street. My son's gone missing his tree. Thomas when's the last time you've seen him? About half an hour ago. Right, okay. I went upstairs half an hour ago and left the sun's down in, and then he's gone. What's going on? We've got a, uh, a log here from another police officer that someone's called in saying they found a child walking down the road. Uh, right. His name's Sam. Yeah. Uh, You've not found him. Blackpool's emergency call centres regularly receive calls that raise serious concerns about children's welfare. We've got a female on the line, she's not making any requests. Hello, police emergency. Hello? I can see that you've called before. Is it Andrea? Yes. What's wrong? What's happened tonight? I can't quite put my baby on it, but I know there's something wrong. My first dealings with Andrea was, oh, it'd be years ago now, when she was uh, going to pick the children up from school and she crashed her car into a set of railings outside a co-op. And she staggered out of the car and she was asked, have you been drinking? She went, drinking? I'm fucking pissed. There's something I can't put my finger on, but there's something that's just... There's something not right about this child. She has a daughter who's aged 17 or 18, and basically the daughter is the mother who looks after the younger son and the actual mother. Hello? Hello? Are you listening to me? I am listening to you. What is the emergency? What's the problem? <laughs> I've got a huge, big problem that I don't know how to deal with. My parents like to drink um, slightly more than what is moderate. I, as a kid, uh, saw my mum and dad polish off a bottle of scotch a night on some occasions. Andrea, we'll see if we can get somebody to come round and just have a little chat with you and just see whether that makes you feel better at all. It's hard because it, it strikes those chords. It's like reminds me of this particular night or reminds me of this particular situation. Concerned for her safety, the control room has dispatched PC Chris Hardy and an ambulance crew to Andrea's address. She'll be drunk as a skunk now, won't she? She's there. Please, she can come. She's... Andrea! She's swaying all over the show. Sorry, Paul, just give me that. Andrea! Are you all right, my love? OK, how come we're here, then? You, you need more drink. I don't think you do, do you? If we've been perfectly honest, but we'll sort that when we come in. I don't tell anyone about it. Um, I like to keep it to myself. I don't want everyone knowing. I don't want people to look at me and be that person with the alcoholic mum and the problems. Is she in the front room? You have to kind of, like, feed her and stuff like that, and, um, 
obviously make sure you know she's just doing things that are going to keep her clean and just healthy and stuff like that because she can't do it for herself. Why have you called us? Night. Andrew, how, how come we're here? I don't, I don't mean to be rude, but how come we're here? I didn't call the police. Someone, am I allowed to grab a seat? Yeah, I Some, I someone's called the police, haven't they? Well, I maybe called them a couple of times before. Okay. But you can't really understand why your mum's doing it to you. You see other people's parents, you know, doing things for them, and you just wonder why that it's not the same. And question like why it's happening to you all the time. I went through my GCSEs and I did some of those exams on two hours of sleep. You know, <laughs> I don't really know how I did it on two hours of sleep, but I did. And I just got to calm with it. There was an ambulance call before, Andrea. I take it you don't require an ambulance, do you? You're drinking a fair bit. Perhaps sat here with a bottle of Lambrini isn't going to help us tonight, is it? Well, you're on a constant guilt trip because you know you shouldn't be doing it. Um, I know what effect it has on my daughter and my son. I mean, people will say, well, that should be enough, you know, for you to stop if you love them that much. It's not as easy as that. Andrea, I'm going to go now. OK, I'm going to leave you to it. And any more problems, and obviously, you know where we are, but make sure you're just ringing us for the right reasons, OK? Bye right now. Bye bye. Maybe some people can look back with the children and say they've got absolutely everything right. Um, I can't, but I can hand on heart say, you know, I've got it 90% right. She's a beautiful girl. She's got her own sense of independence. She's got loads of friends. So, you know, putting it that way, you know, have I got that much wrong? I don't know. Do you think she'd think the same? I don't know. I, I don't really know. We've never really discussed it. We've, we've never discussed how she, she feels. We never really talk about it. We never really talk. She doesn't really talk about it, you know. It's just before midnight, and in the emergency call centre, a disturbing call is coming in. I just witnessed then myself, the day before left the kitchen side. It's the baby six months old. And where's the mother at? Clubbing. Clubbing? Yeah, taking the piss, basically. Just called the bone clubbing. Kids don't ask to be abused. They're, obviously, they don't ask to be abused. If adults want to beat themselves up or do horrible things to each other, you know, that, that's, that's their decision. That, you know, I'll take the call, I'll make the log out, I'll send the cops, we'll get it dealt with, this, that and the other. I'll, I will do my job. When the kids are involved, quite often, uh, you know, it's, it's after the call, it, it has to be time out. Always bringing the baby out. Sue McGrath and Bob Ray arrive at the scene ahead of the police. It wasn't, I wasn't actually a babysitter. It was my sister and a friend. Your sister and a friend yeah. were babysitting. Yeah. And his mum's where? In town. And when she you back? I don't know. <coughs> Is that how old they are? 13, 14, yeah. He's got a bump on the back of his head. Well, it, it grey, so red. Yeah. He's fell a, f a good three and a half foot, four foot off the worktop. Worktop's just, uh, the baby changing mat's just balanced on the worktop. And then, um, yeah, look. And the, the back garden's just full of discarded nappies, it's not even in bins or nothing. There's too many people that can't be bothered. They take parenting on. They have kids too easily. But once you've got them, you've got them for life and they're your responsibility for life. And it's a responsibility you can't shirk and people do. If there's any issues, I'm going to tell you Child's Police Protection now. Mm. OK, I will trust you. I've I'll got a lot of issues. Up. Yeah, so have I. Yeah, I, mean, I so don't even know. Mum doesn't even know what's gone on yet, unless mum, somebody's rung her. I'll follow you straight up. You're on a couple yeah, load of the back garden. He's just been chucking nappies out the mm. window. Mm. Mm. Sometimes, when, when you take a, a particularly bad call, you know that 
when the cops had been and, you know, whoever gets locked up is locked up and it's all done and dusted. It's still not the end of it for the kid, it's the end of it for us. It'll be the end of it for the social workers. They'll move on to the next case. But that kid has got that for life. It, it, it'll have affected it for life. And, uh, and that's difficult to deal with. Sorry. Let's go this way, shall we? Apparently, Mum's pregnant again. Ultimately, no action was taken against the mother, and the baby was returned home. We've got so many problem families, we've got so much social deprivation. I go around houses constantly where I wouldn't leave a child, but if I took out a police protection order on every address I went in where I thought I wouldn't want my children living here, we wouldn't do anything else. It's been a week since three-year-old Sam was found wandering out alone. When he was taken home, concerns were raised about the state of the house and lack of food for Sam and his two brothers. Hi, Rosemary, all right? How are you doing? It's Friday evening, and PC Joe Hardman's back to check if things have improved. So, look at these lot. I know. Jay. Madhouse. You've got your hands full here, haven't you? Oh, I am very. We want to just check that you've got everything for the kids. Yeah. All we're coming is to make sure that you've taken everything we've said on board. We're not, we're not trying to catch you out. Oh, you stocked up with milk and everything like yeah. that. And let's just have a look in the freezer. That'd be a better one to have a look and check. What are you doing up there? Come here. Trouble. What's that? Oh, don't touch that. So you're pretty stocked up with food and bread and everything. Like that. Oh, no. I had six months training in which I covered the theft act violent crimes, traffic. There's a lot crammed into it. There wasn't a lot about pastoral care of children and the impacts that you have when you take them into care. It's probably a couple of days of input. Brilliant. The lads are obviously <laughs> jumping around. They're absolutely fine, aren't they? And, and you've had no other issues, and that's all we wanted to check. Sam. PC Sam. Let's. I don't think it should be a matter for the police, but I don't see another solution to it. There, there is the theory that 999 can't be the catch-all for everything, but I think it's a bit of a, an archaic way of looking at it. I would rather go to that address and do something positive. It's not, it's not ideal. What, we're not living in a perfect world, are we? So. Right, I'll leave you with these lot, cos I'm going to get beaten up, aren't I? So, see you later. Pack it in with the lights, please, Joe. Tonight, it's PC Ellis's turn to call at a familiar address. Sorry, I'm Hi, are you all right? Yeah. Is your mum in? Yeah, she is. Andrea's called 999, claiming her daughter's been fighting with her. Andrea, you all right? No, don't do this to me. Who do what to you? You've rung us. No. I'm What's the matter? Have you been drinking? She smacks me around the head. Right. Whereabouts on your head? I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but I know that she did that. Is this when you're being violent towards her? Yes. So do you think she's perhaps defending herself? I don't know. You don't know? I, I, I don't know. Right. I've been being here as many times as I have. I'm a bit loath to believe you on face value. You're a heavy drinker, you make a lot of allegations. Your daughter, God bless her soul, is working her socks off trying to get her grades at school while having to contend with your behaviour. What I'm saying is, I, I don't exactly know. All right. If she starts playing up, ring us mm -hmm. and we'll come down and we'll give you a lift to your dad and we'll sort yeah. her out. You don't need to be dealing with it yourself. Mm -hmm. How did your exams go? Um, they were okay, thank you. I got three A's in my A-levels and two C's, so... Happy night. Good girl. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. What are you doing university-wise, etc.? Are you looking at going or not? Um, yeah. You think of all these children that blame their upbringing for, for their lack of motivation and stuff, and I think, well take her as an example. It, it's possible. I think she's 
an amazing representation of how you can bring good out of a bad situation. She could have gone down a very, very different path and society certainly would have excused her for it. I'm going to be going to uni in three months. Um, I think it'd be nice just to go away and not have to worry about it and to be able to focus completely on what I want to do rather than having to think about somebody else all the time. Um, yeah, just put it out of my head for a while. I think it would be nice. Life might get better after that point. It certainly helps me get through sometimes to think that there are them positives out there. There are, you know, them girls in the world that, that pull through. And that's where the, the element of hope comes in and it, it's not all doom and gloom in this job. There's, there's things that can really warm your heart and, and make you think, yeah, it's worth doing.